In this video, we're gonna explore an essential visual effects concept that will save you so much time and money. If you can really understand this one thing, it unlocks so many doors to the kinds of videos you can make. I'm so excited to get into this, let's do it. So we just released a new sketch film kind of thing, and it has this effect in it where a guy turns into a wolf. <laughs> And this is kind of a cheesy effect on purpose, but getting this effect to look like this is actually a little bit more involved than you might think. Way back in the day when they made the original Wolfman movie, they had these scenes where he transformed. And really how they did it was they had some practical makeup and effects and everything, and they had it at different stages of his transformation. And so they would have him stay still, stop the camera, put a little bit of makeup on, run the camera for a second, stop it, put a little more on, and they would do this in a few different steps. And it would fade in between those scenes of him wearing different stages of the makeup and effects. So we wanted to make something kind of like that. We're just doing this with one stage, going from human to wolf. By the way, if you wanna try this out yourself, you can actually get this footage for free from our Media Vault. There's a link in the card up there or in the description. You can download this and follow along. But essentially we have the human hands, and that's just kind of holding the hands out like this. And then we have a similar shot of the wolf hands. Now we bought the like the cheesiest, cheapest wolf hand gloves that you could get on Amazon. And so it's like this rubber hand over a black glove. And we want it to be cheesy, but I mean, come on. <laughs> the black glove thing is not great. And so what we did with visual effects is cut out just the hand part and the sleeve and everything from these wolf hands and even added a little bit of the kind of fingernail effects on here, just to make that look a little bit nicer. And we tracked the subtle movement of the human hands and applied that movement to this modified still of the wolf hands. So each set of hands moves exactly the same, but we're just replacing the human hands with the wolf hands and just fading in between them, literally just a crossfade. And we have these cut out and put over a clean plate, which is just a video of the blank floor, and that all comes together to look like a shot that we just faded. <laughs> it's one of the effects where you can see an obvious visual effect here, but all the stuff that actually makes it work is kind of hidden, <laughs> which is sort of depressing. But the key to making this cheesy effect not quite so cheesy is a concept that is also just foundational for visual effects. And it's so important that you understand it. And that concept is masks. So what the heck is a mask? Well, put simply, a mask is a way to select a part of the screen and kind of isolate it. So if I wanted to apply some kind of adjustment to let's say just this S, I could make a mask around the S and then apply an adjustment to it. And it would only happen inside of that mask. Masks are also essential for cutting things out. So if I wanted to move this S separately from all the other letters, it might involve cutting it out with a mask and then moving this part separately than the rest of the word. Now, in this case, if I were actually building this with text, I could just make text that says mask and then a separate text that says S. But if I didn't have that luxury, I could chop it up with a mask. In Fusion, the masks live right here on our toolbar. And we have a few different kinds. We have a rectangle, an ellipse, a polygon, and a B-spline. And these are essentially just different ways of creating shapes on the screen. So if I were to drag this rectangle up here to the viewer, we can see that I can create a rectangle on the screen. And this is going to select a rectangular part of the screen. Similarly for an ellipse, I can make my selection an ellipse shape, or I can use a polygon to actually draw my own mask here. And that's a lot of fun or a B-spline, which is a similar thing, but I don't click and drag the points to make soft shape. I can grab these sharp points and it's always gonna kind of smooth them out. So which mask you use depends on the situation. Sometimes you might need to select an area that's more circular. Sometimes it's more of a rectangle or a square. Sometimes what you need to select isn't part of your system. And so you have to make a custom shape. It's a goose. Honk. <laughs> But either way, when we have any node, we'll just make a red background node, and we apply a mask to it by grabbing a mask node and then connecting it to that blue input in Fusion, whatever shape that we select on screen, that's going to limit whatever that node does to happen inside of that mask. When you connect a mask to a node, it's like you're saying, hey node, do whatever you're going to do, but just right here, just inside of the mask. 
So if the node turns things yellow, it's just going to do it inside of the mask. If the node draws kind of scratchy scribblies on the screen, it's only going to do that inside of the mask. If it blurs things, that's only going to happen inside of the mask. If it draws happy little wiener dogs, that's only going to happen inside of the mask. So in this case, when we're connecting this mask to the background, this node's job is to draw a red background, but we're going to limit it to only do that inside of the mask, right? What's amazing about this concept is that we can use a mask to do so much stuff. For instance, here with our wolf hands footage, we want to get rid of this ugly black glove. We just want the wolf hand looking part without any of the extra cheesy looking part. And so what we can do on this footage is we could take a mask and I won't quite connect it yet, but I am looking at this footage here in the viewer. I can click and drag and trace out this hand and be really detailed about it and get a nice edge that eventually is going to cut out the hand and kind of isolate just the parts that I want to show. This is something that I find that people overcomplicate a lot. Really all that mask is doing is telling a node where to do its job. So we can plug in this polygon mask into the wolf hands footage. This node's job is to load that footage and put it on the screen, but we're only going to do that inside of this mask. And now we have this limited here and we can go in and make sure this looks good, adjust it a little bit, and we can make sure that these little edges look as good as possible. We have a course available called Intro to Fusion, and a lot of students are in there that just have never really done anything like this before. And it's, uh, it's so cool to see students that didn't really have a way to make the things that they want to make, be able to pick up something like masks and really start to use them to create cool stuff. That's where it gets really exciting because this is something that really anybody can do. It doesn't take lots and lots of skills. It's just really understanding this basic concept that when you have a mask, you're just selecting the part that you want to be affected, really, of the image. And when you break it down like that, it's not so hard. It's pretty easy. And within just no time at all, it's gonna start to feel more natural. There we go, we'll make this look good. So now we have this cut out and kind of isolated and we don't have this ugly black glove under it anymore. It's just the wolf hand. And let's just disconnect this mask here for just a second and look at the original footage again. Now, this is the point where I looked at this footage and said, you know, I don't really want to mask all of these individual strands of hair because that sounds awful and infinite work. And I don't know if I can even make that look good because selecting each strand of hair is going to be rough. And so luckily there is a quicker way to mask stuff that's kind of frizzy like this fur, and that's with Magic Mask. What Magic Mask does is it lets you select a subject on screen, and it, what it will do is use AI Magic, and it figures out kind of where the edges are, figures out what this thing is, and it kind of recognizes it, and it will cut it out for you. And it'll even do that with things that are moving, which is just nuts. So we can take this footage and we can add Magic Mask, which by the way is only available in the paid version of Resolve, the studio version, but it's pretty darn amazing because I can color over this like this and it will mask out the rest of the image. And if I switch this mode over here to better, then it does a pretty good job of selecting the fur and doing a nice little kind of soft mask around the fur and a hard mask around kind of this other stuff. A little problem though, is that when we hold Alt and try and get rid of the black here, it is a little bit tricky and it kind of cuts into the edge of this. And so it's really hard to get a good selection in between these fingers and everything. What we can do is use Magic Mask to select just the fur and the parts that are easy for Magic Mask. And we can use the mask that we made earlier and combine them to have the best of both worlds. So I could just hold Alt and just drag across this like this. So I'm pretty much just selecting the fur and the sleeve which I think should work just fine. And we can put these masks together. This kind of thing actually happens quite a bit where you have a subject that might be really easy to trace out manually with a mask for part of it. So for instance, I could do a mask around her shoulder here and that's gonna work just fine, but I'm not gonna go in and mask out every single little strand of hair here because that it would be miserable. And so we could use several different techniques to get a good selection of her hair that may or may not select her shoulders and everything else in a way that we actually like. So the big idea is that we mask the parts that are easy to mask with our pen tool. 
And we can use a different method to select the edge around her hair and kind of these flyaways and things like that. And this method could be something like magic mask, or in this case, it might be something like changing the contrast to where we would have a really solid black here and kind of a brighter white in the background. And we can use that high contrast image as a selection mask. But regardless of how you do it, the idea that you can combine multiple different techniques of masking together to get a perfect mask, that's what you really need to realize here. And so here we have this part and we can also take this footage. I'll just copy and paste this real quick, copy and paste, and we'll put our mask back in the wolf hands footage like that. That's cutting out the hand part. And we can just merge these together like this. We'll put this magic mask thing here in the background that has our soft selection for our fur and the hard hand here in the foreground. We put those together and we can have a pretty good selection to where we have the soft mask here and here, good edges here, and then our custom mask edges around here. And all together, it's cut out nicely. And so this is pretty much what I did to isolate this hand here, but I just kept this as a still, because actually if I move this back and forth, everything's gonna break. But on that one frame, everything's beautiful. And so what I could do is either run this through something like a time speed node and then hit freeze frame. And that's going to give us just a still frame throughout the composition. Or I can go back to my original frame here and just right click on this viewer and save image. And so in the work files, I actually have two images saved out that I made just like this for the left hand and the right hand. And if you want to, you could just hit shift spacebar, type loader and load this in. So here's our left hand. I could bring this in and this is just a still of our left hand, okay? But this is how it's made. We have the original footage, we're magic masking it, for the furry parts, we're taking a custom mask and applying that to the hand part, and then we're just merging those together to create one cut out thing to rule them all. What do you smell? Man flesh. Then we just save that out as a still, essentially. So we do that for the left hand and the right hand. So here's the right hand, very similar idea. But then we did some fanciness. I was looking at these fingernails for the glove and I thought, you know, these fingernails just don't look that great. They're just kind of gray and I feel like we should have some more texture on there. What's cool about compositing is you can take the texture of something and with some trickery, apply that texture to something else. So there's also a still in here called horn.jpg and this is just a shot of a bullhorn that has these kind of scratches and has this grain to it that I think is really interesting and feels a lot like the monster's claw. You know, if you were gonna zoom into this, it's like, yeah, monster's claw could be made out of that. And so what I did was I masked this out roughly just to kind of cut out all the parts that aren't this texture, put some brightness and contrast on it, and I ran it through a transform node and just rotated it and scaled it to be over each fingernail. So this looks super weird, but I just kind of placed it awkwardly over each fingernail. And then we can use what we know about masking to actually limit it to that fingernail. So if we were going to take an image like this and limit it to just where this fingernail is, we could, of course, draw a mask around here. But the thing that's really neat is because we already have transparency here, a lot of the mask is actually already made for us. So all of this part already has an edge that we've made. And so really all that's left is to work on this edge right here. So we can save a little bit of work just by drawing this edge in and then combining it with this edge to make a mask. So that's pretty much what I did. I got a polygon mask and I went around and just traced around these like cuticle things. I think that's what they're called. And just kind of went around these parts here and made sure that this looks really nice. But I'm really only worried about this part right here. The rest of this, we're gonna combine actually in a second. So we have all of this and let's mask this multi-merge, which is going to mask all of these pieces and put them on so that the edge right here is really good. All right, so the edge on all the cuticles and everything's really good. The rest of this is kind of hanging over the edges and it doesn't look very good. So what we can do is we can take this same image, which has an alpha channel, it has a transparency which is really just kind of a built-in mask. And so the mask for this image, just as it is, looks like this. The black part is transparent and the white part is opaque. And so we can take this and we can apply it to this crazy image and we can all at once cut out all of these fingernails to be just right. All we have to do is use this same image and use the alpha channel 
to mask this image that we just made. There are a lot of ways to do that, but the way that I did this was I made this image here first, and then I ran it through a matte control. Now, a matte control does a bunch of stuff, but one thing I use it for a lot is to just apply a mask later down the flow. I don't want to apply the mask here for my right hand or to any of these transforms or anything like that. I want it to put all of these images together and then kind of stencil it, kind of cut it out. So with that matte control, all we do is just run this image through the matte control and then plug this original image into the gray input. That's the garbage mask input. So I can plug that in like this. And then by default, what it's going to do is get rid of everything within that mask. And so it's sort of doing the opposite of what we want. If we look at the alpha channel, this is kind of what it's doing. <laughs> it's not great. And so what we actually want to do is take this matte control and flip the garbage mat. So invert the garbage mat like that. And that's going to give us those nice edges that will match perfectly with the original image. So it's perfectly cutting out the edges of the fingernails just because it's using the image of the hand as a stencil. And then this part is the mask that I made. Same thing here, this is the mask that I made. And this whole edge is from stenciling this out with the original image. You put that all together and you get a hand with nasty fingernails, and that's what we want. This is really the same idea as combining these masks, right? The difference is if I already had an image where she was perfectly cut out and there was a perfect cutout of her hair and everything like that, then I could use that image itself as a mask because it has that transparency where it is opaque here and transparent here. So that's pretty much what I did with both of those hands. And so what we're doing here is we're taking the original footage. I'm actually adding a little bit of a mask to it because there was actually like a little part right here that I sort of missed. And so I'm just masking that out real quick. I'm just kind of cropping the image to be just within this mask. Then I'm putting all of the horn textures roughly over the fingers and then using this mask to mask out that merge and then using this original hand picture to stencil it out and fix those edges. And we did that for both the right hand and the left hand. And then we moved that down and we applied some tracking to it. So this is the tracking that moves it back and forth. We put both of these together with the tracking and we dissolved between the human hands and the wolf hands and put those both over our clean plate. By the way, the human hands, all I did was just magic mask those real quick. And the edges are not that great. Look, the edges are not good here. But because we shot these hands over the exact same background as the clean plate, you don't really notice this. You don't really notice this edge because it perfectly matches with the background that we're putting over it. If we were going to put this on a dark background or literally anything else other than that clean plate, I would have to do a lot more work. But because we're just putting it over that clean plate, we can use a magic mask and it looks way better. See how it's kind of like nasty on those edges? You just never notice when it's over that background. Isn't that great? Then once we put this all together, we have a really cool effect of a guy turning into a wolf and the hands don't look so much like gloves. <laughs> this is a way to kind of split the difference between practical effects and visual effects and make something that works great for the context of the story. And I love this difference so much. It goes from those are obviously gloves to, oh, those are wolf hands. <laughs> I remember watching the wolf man as a kid and being amazed that he was transforming from a man into a wolf. And it's one of my early memories of special effects and, you know, has a, has a, has a little, uh, little soft place in my heart. If you want to practice masking, which I highly recommend if you want to do visual effects and make movie magic, we have all the footage that you need to be able to do this effect right there. You could download that for free. There's also the link in the description. And if you've been neglecting fusion and you're thinking, you know what, maybe it's time I dive in. Well, you could check out our intro course right there. That's available too. Okay. Thanks for what? Thanks for being here. This is so cool that you watch the videos and we can make cool stuff together. So much fun.